Hi everyone, welcome back. In previous lecture, we have created a handler method to handle user registration page request. And this handler method returns a register hyphen form timelib template view name. In this lecture, we'll create registration form timelib template and then we'll design the user registration form and we'll use this user form model class object to store the form data and we'll also use this list profession to publish the data in a selection box okay so let's go to templates folder and within templates folder let's create a html file and let's give name as a register hyphen form perfect let's give title as user registration form next let's go ahead and let's define the xml namespace for time leap. so go to html element and just type xml namespace colon th equal to http and then www.timelip.org perfect next go to body within the body let's design the user registration form so before that let's have a div first and let's align this div at a center for example let's give align as a center well if you look at the screenshot over here we are going to design the user registration form something like this and we are going to align this form at a center for that we have used align center okay next within this div let's create one more div and let's have an inline style for this div so let's type style and let's give a border border hyphen style equal to so let's give a border style as a solid okay next let's give width as a 500 pixel so this should be colon perfect so if you look at the screenshot over here we need to give a border to this form okay for that we have used solid you know value and next we need to give width for the form so that is 500 pixel next within this div let's create a heading so let's use h1 element and let's give heading something like user registration well if you look at the screenshot we need to use this user registration heading right for that we have used h1 header element and then we have passed with this user registration text in the body next let's go ahead and let's design the form so here just type form and then let's define the attribute for this form so let's say role as a form and then let's use http method post and let's use a timely attribute that is th colon action to define the action url for this form so in order to define the url we have to use a link expression and here's the syntax at the rate within the curly braces just pass the url that is register hyphen save well we will write the handler method to handle this request in next lecture okay next let's use th colon object timely attribute to point to the model class object and in order to point to the model class object we have to use variable expression so let's type dollar within a curly braces and then the model class object name is user form well this user form model object is coming from the spring mc controller if you go to form controller within this form controller we have handler method and within this handler method we have created empty user form model object and we have added it to the model object over here and here this model dot add attribute has attribute name and attribute value and in order to access this attribute value we have to use this attribute name okay so this attribute name we are using over here user form okay and th colon object timely attribute will point to the user registration model object and whenever user enter the data in the form and submit the form that form data will be stored in this user form model object and this user form model object is empty basically if you go to form controller you can able to see this is the empty object so that we can store the form data okay great next let's go and let's define the input fields for this form so here let me have first label so let's type label and let's give label name as full name okay next let's create a input field and let's close it and within this input field let's define the 
its properties let's say type text and then let's use th colon field attribute to point to the field name of the model class object and in order to point to the field name of the model object we have to use a selection expression so here is the syntax star within a curly braces the field name that is name okay well in order to use selection expression we have to define the previously selected model class object and here we have already using th colon object family attribute to point to the model class object over here okay and here we are using selection expression to get the field name of this model class object and here's a syntax to use selection expression like star within a curly braces we need to pass the field name that is name okay so this name is basically a field name of user form model class object for example if you go to user form user form model class has a name field right so this field we are using here okay perfect next let's go and let's define the input field for email so let's have a label post so before that let me add one break element to give space between you know input fields so here let's add a label and let's use label name as email and after that let's use a input element and let's close it and then let's use its attribute like type let's use email and then let's use th colon field family attribute to point to the name of the model class object and let's use the selection expression and here is the syntax star within curly braces email okay perfect now we have defined the input field for email next let me add a one break element to give a space and next let's define the input field for password so here let's first add the label and let's give label name as password perfect next let's use input field and let's close it and let's use its attribute type password and then th colon field family attribute and then selection expression and go to user form and from here also you can copy the field name for example i'm going to copy this password and i'm going to paste it over here okay so make sure that whatever the field name you have in a model class the same field name you have to use in a selection expression okay now we have defined the input field for password next let's go and let's use input fields for gender so here let me add a break element and after that let me add a label and let's give label name as gender perfect next let's use a input field and let's close it and let's you type as a radio okay and next let's go ahead and let's use a th colon field family attribute and then here let's use selection expression star within a curly braces and then pass the field name that is gender and next here we need to add a one more attribute that is value and let's use value name as mail perfect and here we need to basically give a name to the radio box that is mail okay perfect next let's go and let's define one more input field over here for female so let's have a type as a radio and then th colon field family attribute and then selection expression and then pass gender and then here value female perfect and let's give value as a female over here next let's add a break element to give some space and next let's have a label for profession let's give label name as profession and let's have a selection box over here so here's the syntax next let's design the selection box so just type select all right and within this select let's have a attribute that is th colon field family attribute and then let's use a selection expression that is star within a curly braces profession perfect and then 
within the selection box we, we need to have an option right so for that let's have an option well we need to show a list of professions in this selection box for that we need to iterate over a list of profession in this option element for example if we go to form controller and go to this handler method here we have created a list of profession and we have added to the model right now let's go and let's iterate over this list of profession and let's display a list of profession in this selection box so here in an option we need to just use th colon each timely attribute to iterate over a list of profession so let me use th colon each timely attribute and here is a syntax local variable colon and then let's use a variable expression dollar within a curly braces just pass the attribute name that is list profession well this attribute name is basically coming from the form controller if you go to form controller you can able to see we have added attribute name as a list profession and attribute value as an actual list of profession okay and here we are using this attribute name here okay you can copy and paste it over here next let's use th colon value timely attribute to get a particular value from this list so in order to get that let's use a variable expression and then just pass this p as a local variable and next let's display this profession by using th colon text timely attributes for that let's use th colon text timely attribute and then let's use a variable expression dollar within a curly braces just pass a local variable that is p p stands for profession okay great now we have designed the selection box next let's create a text area as well so here let me add a break element and after that let me add the label and let's give label name as address perfect and then let's use text area over here text area okay and here let's add an attribute for this text area let's give rows as 5 and then columns as 25 all right and next let's use th colon field timely attribute to point to the field name of the model class attribute and here we have field name as a address so here let's use selection expression and then pass address as a field name okay perfect now we have created a text area for this address next we need to create a submit button so before that let me add one back element to give space between this text area and submit button so here let's have a button and let's give type for the button as a submit and let's give name to the button something like register next let's go ahead and let's run our spring boot application and let's see how this user registration form looks in a browser so let me start the spring boot application and there we go our spring boot application is up and running in embedded tomcat server on port 8080 next let's go to form controller and here we have given a url to access this handler method the url name is register so let's copy this register link and go to browser in a new tab just type localhost colon 8080 slash register and hit enter and there we go we got a user registration page but if you can see the alignment okay so basically we need to add a css to make this form look good okay so we haven't added any css that's why the form looks like this okay so let's go and let's add some css so that this user registration form looks good okay so let me go to IntelliJ idea next let's see how to add a css to this user registration form so go to register hyphen form.html page and go to head element over here right after this title let's create a style html element and let's give type as a text slash css perfect within this style element let me quickly write the css code and notice here i have given a css for label as display inline block with 200 pixel margin 5 pixel text align left and i have provided css for input type text email password and select as a display inline block with 200 pixel and i have added css for input type radio input type checkbox and also for button okay well i am going to attach the source code of this section of the lecture so that you can go ahead and you can copy this piece of code okay now we have added css for this user registration form 
next let's go ahead and let's run the spring boot application and let's see how this css you know will apply to user registration form and here you can see our spring boot application is up and running in embedded tomcat server on port 8080 next let's go to browser and go ahead and refresh our spring boot application and there we go now you can able to see the user registration page looks good well in next lecture we will create a handler method to handle user registration submission request and we will display the user registered data in a separate page all right so whenever user you know enter the data and submit the form then we need to handle this form submission request at a backend isn't it so in next lecture we will create a handler method to handle this user registration submission request and we will display the user registered data in a separate page all right great i will see you in the next lecture